Hi, I'm Sullivan Kaufman. Today I'm making a video about spring beauty. And we're here at Adkins Arboretum and nearby Tuckahoe State Park in Ridgely, Maryland. Spring beauties are one of the first flowers I look for in the spring. They grow in large colonies in rich soil, often along creek floodplains. These are growing on the floodplain of Tuckahoe Creek in March and April. Appearing before the trees leaf out, the whole plant will die back by late spring, making it a true spring ephemeral. Spring ephemerals take advantage of the light and nutrients available while trees are still dormant. Their pink and white flowers open with the sun, remaining closed on cloudy days. The pink stripes direct pollinators, mostly bees, bee-like flies, and butterflies, towards a reward of nectar and pollen. The mining bee, Andrina originiae, specializes in collecting spring beauty pollen. Females carry pollen back to their tunnels and soil to provision their offspring. Because temperatures can be chilly in spring, you usually see these bees out only on sunny days between 10 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Each stem has a couple little grass-like leaves coming off of the stem. A few additional leaves may grow from the base of the plant. If a plant has only one leaf, it will not flower that year. The three-part seed capsule opens, ejecting shiny black seeds, each with a small white eliosome, a fleshy structure rich in lipids that attracts ants to carry the seeds back to their nests. The eliosomes are used to feed the ant larvae, and the seed is discarded in the ant's refuse area. Ant dispersal of seeds is called myrmecochory. The stems and leaves grow from a small round corm, an underground storage part of the stem with many fibrous roots. Rodents eat the corms, and people have eaten them too, calling them fairy spuds. Yule Gibbons, in Stalking the Wild Asparagus, describes them as having the sweetest sweetness and flavor of boiled chestnuts, although they are softer and smoother in texture. He also advises, Let's not let our greediness for this food destroy or diminish this attractive plant. The tubers are good food for the body, but after a long winter, the pale rose flowers in early spring are food for the soul. I agree. Some of the early colonists of Virginia sent specimens of this pretty spring wildflower to Europe to be named, including John Clayton. He was a county courthouse clerk in Gloucester, Virginia, also the owner of a tobacco plantation and an avid botanist. Linnaeus named the spring beauty after John Clayton and the colony of Virginia. Spring beauties have alternately been classified as part of the Portulaca family and the Montiaceae or miner's lettuce family. Genetic analysis done in the 1990s shows that Claytonias are more closely related to other Montiaceae and are more distantly related to the Portulacaceae. You can find spring beauties throughout much of the eastern and central United States and Canada. Other fairly common species of Claytonia in the, in the U.S. include Claytonia caroliniana in the east and Claytonia lanceolata in the west. It's not too hard to grow spring beauties if you have proper conditions, including shade trees, good rich soil, and plenty of moisture. They look lovely with other spring flowers like Virginia bluebells and trilliums. But for me, the thrill is to see a broad swath of these delicate flowers spread out through the forest where the mining bees search for pollen and the ants await the seeds. I hope you'll get to see some of these beauties this spring too.